Hi everyone, welcome to Myth Busting Mondays. Hello, I'm Orna Walters. And I'm Matthew Walters. And if you didn't know that, uh, we're here every Monday, for the most part, um, <laughs> busting a myth about love. And today's myth is love at first sight. Yeah. Is it real? Is it real? Is, is it real? Is it real to just see somebody and know in that moment that that is the love of your life? Hmm. hmm. Let's find hmm. out. Let's find out. So uh, thank you for joining us. Um, just heads up because here in the United States, this is the week of Thanksgiving. And so um, we'll be taking the rest of the week off. So just as a heads up, um, we'll catch you next Monday for Myth Busting Monday in a week. Um, all right. So is love at first sight real? Well, we don't know 100% whether it is real or not. I mean, we can assume that there are some people somewhere that met and boom, the stars aligned and they spent the rest of their lives together. Um, but we don't hear from those people. No, nope, they're not the people we talk to. Right? <laughs> yeah, so um, we don't know anybody who's personally had that experience where it worked out. Unfortunately, most of the people that we speak with tell us of an experience of quote love at first sight but it didn't last and so that leads us to question what kind of love are you sort of you know what's your definition of love right so is there a lust at first sight oh hell yeah <laughs> is there attraction at first sight definitely yeah. right so let's let's talk about you know what we're talking about so first question is what does love feel like to you? How do you know that you're in love? You're quote unquote in love with somebody, right? What is that feeling? And maybe it's something right now for you to just explore for yourself about, hmm, what does it feel like to be in love, right? Does it feel warm? Does it feel exciting? Does it feel obsessive? Does it feel overwhelming? Does it feel Does it make you feel dizzy, off balance? Does it have a churning feeling in your belly is it Maybe something butterflies in your chest does it feel similar to anxiety does it feel similar <laughs> to peace and calm and bliss what does being in love with somebody feel like physically in your body what's the body sensation that lets you know that you're in love that answering that question just that one question will give you a lot of information about yourself that you can utilize then to see if you're setting yourself up for success to have what we call long lasting soul satisfying love or are you setting yourself up to be looking for the thing that brings you heartbreak right mm, unfortunately we talk to a lot of people who are set up to bring themselves more and more and more of the heartbreak and that's the cycle we want to help you break out of Yep, we had a, a male client we were working with and he was really attracted to women that he felt were very successful, women that had high status in, in as he perceived, right? He, he was a successful, you know, in his life as well, but he really, you know, was seeking someone that had this feeling of status and success and power. And anytime while we were working with him and he ended up dating somebody like that, it was really uncomfortable for him. He felt insecure. He felt always trying to prove himself. He was always trying to find out, does she like him? Does she not like him? Right? He, he was not feeling grounded and connected. And as we worked with him, what we realized was that was an old story that he had, right? An old story from childhood about what love meant and what it felt like. And he was trying to seek out this familiar feeling. And at one point, he had this big aha on one of our coaching sessions. And he said, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. So what you're telling me is, is I'm probably, if I'm in love with somebody, I'm not going to feel like that. And we said, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. And so he had to like recalibrate what it was he was going for. Because he was like, oh, I'm kind of sad to think that I won't feel that way with my beloved. And we were like, well, what if we told you it would feel different? It won't feel like that, but it would be a long lasting relationship where you're not feeling insecure and where you are feeling confident in the relationship where you know you could count on that other person to love you and accept you as is. And you can work through all your problems together and challenges that arise. And he goes, oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> so maybe some of you are saying that. Oh, right. So if you're if you're oh, let us know. 
Give us a comment. Give us a like, a thumbs up, a heart, something. Let us know what you think of this idea. Because a lot of times people just assume that the feeling they're going for is the feeling that's going to bring them something yummy that their brain has decided is the thing they want. When as a lot of times the sensation, that body sensation of the emotion is actually not at all something that will bring you what it is you desire, right? If you're looking for that long lasting soul satisfying love, then you got to dig into what's the sensation, what's the feeling of love that it is that you're looking for. I know, gosh, when Matthew and I started dating, um, you know, we had been in the same room for over a year, at least once a month, because we met uh, offline. We were both online dating when we met, actually mm -hmm. doing a lot of online dating, both of us. Uh, but we met through a business networking group. So we met out in the real world, in the 3D world, offline world. And we had been in the same networking meeting for over a year. And we were definitely in that room. I knew who he was. I mean, I'd seen him in the room. I had never talked to him until I talked to him. So it took about a year for us to have our first conversation. Yeah, we might be bad networkers, <laughs> maybe. Um, but what I do know is, you know, this is a very attractive, handsome man. There was a lot of reasons why I didn't end up talking to Matthew. But when we started, um, when we met one-on-one -on -one for the first time and then thereafter, oh, it didn't feel for me the way other relationships had felt. I didn't feel uncertain. I didn't feel um, anxious. I didn't wonder if he was gonna call. I didn't wonder, you know, where is this going? As a matter of fact, I never had to ask Matthew, where is this going? He showed me every step of the way because he was leading a relationship forward and he showed me all through our dating he was leading the relationship and driving it forward to introduce me to his family, to introduce me to his friends, to book time with me, to spend time with me. He showed me every step of the way that he really wanted me exclusively and to claim me and, and all of that yummy stuff that us women like. <laughs> You're sweet. Yeah, because I knew, I didn't know when I first saw her, right? When I first saw her in that networking group, I was seeking, I was seeking a lot of things. I wasn't just seeking a relationship, but I was seeking some answers in my life about certain things I'd been working through and struggling with. And and so when I met Orna at that networking group, I thought the reason that I really wanted to talk to her, right? Because I, I remember that day, right? Sitting at the the table and, 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 you know, we're all going around the table and introducing ourselves and talking about what we do. And Orna starts talking and it's like, there's this light above her. And I'm like, hmm, something about her, right? And I didn't know what it was. I just knew that I needed to speak with her. I didn't know that it was gonna lead to this. I didn't think it was falling in love or a lightning bolt of love. It was just a sense of knowingness and a sense of recognition. So let's talk about that, right? Where does that come from, that, that energy, right? If, if when you say, what does love feel like? And it's, and it's, and it's got all this vibration to it that's, that's maybe exciting, but not always comfortable, right? What's really going on there? And what we're talking about when you feel that way is it's your subconscious mind, right? Your subconscious mind saying, this is familiar, this is familiar, this is familiar. Now it doesn't say this is familiar good, or this is familiar bad. It just senses a recognition of an energy or a dynamic that feels familiar to you. Right. And if you have struggled in love and if you have met people, you thought like, wow, this is my person. There was that intense attraction and then it didn't work out. and Maybe it crashed really badly and and all that stuff happened. Well, then maybe your subconscious, this is familiar, is pointing out a dynamic that's not healthy for you. But it's familiar. To, but it's familiar. <laughs> right? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that subconscious mind. We could talk for hours about it, but um, you know, when you come into the world, all those little babies that come into the world, you were once that little baby, right? We always say you come in as the human embodiment of the energy of love. And that's because you don't have any limiting stories about love. Babies come in as that human embodiment of that energy. And I think it's why we like being around babies because they have no blocks to love. And so they're in the present moment. They will shine that spotlight of love on anyone who's around and they will receive love from anybody who's around who's giving it. And we don't have any limiting beliefs keeping us from just giving love and receiving love. We're just an open network of love, right? 
And what we want to say is that baby comes in all subconscious. There's no um, analyzing going on. So we have this uh, colloquialism we say in our society. We say, oh, you can't reason with a four-year-old, right? If you've never heard that, that's a thing people say, <laughs> right? Um, you can't reason with a four-year-old. And when somebody says that, they're speaking a literal truth. You can't reason with a four-year-old because a four-year-old does not have the ability to reason. You can explain yourself why mommy has to do something or whatever to your child. They don't reason. They can't. We can't. The brain is not set up that way until about age eight, nine. So if you look at school before that age, it's mostly repetition, right? One plus one is two, two plus two is four, three plus three is six. And it's just a memorization. There's no actual adding or subtracting going on. It's just a memorization process. And kids, little kids are good at that. They're good at repeating things that they've heard, almost like a parrot, right? <laughs> I know sometimes, you know, our friends have come over with little kids and they repeat things that they hear at our place and we're like, uh oh, Oops. is that okay? You know, <laughs> um, like we have a toy for our cat that we call Crack Mouse. And, you know, that, that friend took their child to somebody else's house with a cat and their friend said, do you have a Crack Mouse? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oops, sorry. Um, and so that's what kids do. They repeat what they've heard, but they're not thinking about what they're saying or doing in that memorization process. Around age eight, nine, the mind shifts and develops where we have this conscious mind, an analytical filter in between, and then the subconscious. And so when we're talking about the subconscious, it doesn't analyze. It's that earlier part of your brain, right, that is literally just um, has a, a, a system that has a bucket. Like it says, this is all of my known experiences. And the subconscious is trying to keep you alive. And because whatever age you are right now, listening to us at this very moment, it says, let me bring you more of these same experiences because you're alive. Right. So it has a really low bar foundational desire of just keeping your heart beating and your brain functioning and your lungs expanding and contracting to, to let in and, and let out air. That's it. But get this, it cannot determine if you're alive and blissfully happy or if you're miserable and suicidal. It literally has no idea. So when we say this idea of what the subconscious recognizes, all it can recognize is what is familiar. And it will distort or attempt to steer you away from things that are not familiar. Isn't exactly. that interesting? It's very interesting, right? So, yeah. so thinking about that newborn baby who, you know, like Orna said, is the physical embodiment of the energy of love and is just this subconscious mind coming into the world and experiencing things and learning things, but not analyzing, not reasoning yet. During that time period, we have a desire for love and uh, some understanding of how we want to receive it, right? And there's generally and almost everybody a discrepancy between that desire for how you want to receive love and how love is given to you by your parents right or whoever raised you and in that discrepancy right we take on this wounding story and this wounding story says Oof, love doesn't work the way i think it does and so there must be something wrong with me right so instead of being able to say, well, gee, mom, that's not helpful. What would be really great is if you gave me a hug and told me you love me. What we tend to say is what's wrong with me that my mother's behaving this way. We take on this wounding story. We call this whole thing your love imprint. And we could talk for hours about what it is and how it works. But the whole point being that oftentimes when we have that light bulb go off, when we see somebody or we feel that energy or we feel that intensity and we see somebody, we call that a love imprint match. Right, because it's your subconscious saying, this is familiar to that wounding story, right? And so oftentimes we say it this way, is your GPS for love off, right? Are the settings and somehow steering you in the wrong direction? And what you think could be love at first sight is actually something that's gonna lead you to more heartbreak. So I will tell you the story. It was um, 1989, I am, what, 23-ish? 23, my birthday's in the middle of the year, so either 22 or 23, um, it was definitely 1989. And I remember exactly where I was, who I was with, what I was wearing, and oh my gosh, I see this guy and I'm like, whoa, wow, 
ding, 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 all the alarm bells and whistles go off, and wow, I thought this must be my guy. What's funny to me about telling this story is I'm still friends with this person and I see him and talk to him now and again. Um, I think the last time actually Matthew was with me, we had lunch with him. So, I mean, he's a friend that I see now and again, but we did date and it was not at all fulfilling. And it kind of makes me laugh a little bit now because he definitely makes a good friend, um, but he does not my guy. I mean, he is so not my guy that it makes me laugh because for a long time I pined away for, for him. Like I literally was obsessed with him and my 23 year old self, I'm 54 now, so there's been a few years since that 1989 experience. But I mean, I spent well over a decade thinking that was supposed to be my guy. And I tried to prove it to him and show him and be that person and I was disappointed and let down and heartbroken over and over and over again. Aww. Yeah, it was really hard. Yeah, I hear yeah. that. And I, I mean, I even got to the point before Matthew showed up where I was like, lose my phone number and forget my name. Goodbye. Like, I tried to really just forget about it. Um, it's just one of those things where we ended up circling back around and being friends anyway. And I, I kind of like that we're friends now because we have a completely different dynamic and he's happily married and I'm happily married, clearly. And it's, it's like I get to find out different things about him and I get to laugh a little bit. Not laugh like ha 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 Orna, like, like a practical joke laugh, but laugh Oh my gosh, because that younger version of me just had no idea how low I had set the bar, you know? Um, because even though I had all the yummy feelings with that guy, he wasn't able or capable to deliver what I really need to be with somebody long-term, right? I'm sitting next to that person right now. He's right here. He's with me every day. We, there's no escaping, actually. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> You're hilarious. Yeah, I'm, I'm Especially now, right? We I, can't go well, anywhere. That's what I'm joking. Like, we can't, yeah, I mean, usually, you know, I go out with my girlfriends now and again, but nope, I haven't done that for months. So here's the deal. When you have that feeling, when you have that lightning bolt, but you think, oh my gosh, this must be love at first sight, please be careful. Please be careful. Because it might just be the subconscious sending you the signal of this is familiar and it's going to lead you down that path of heartbreak that you've been through before. Yeah. Right. And so we talk a lot about how do you break the cycle of different face, same situation syndrome. Right. And this is exactly what we're talking about. So if you release this notion of love at first sight and instead you replace that with this idea of that you're worthy of love, that you desire a long lasting, soul satisfying, true soul partnership, that you want to spend your life with somebody, but you set yourself, your life up, set your life up in such a way where you want to be with that person, but you're not expecting to need that person until you actually know who that person is. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, I didn't need Matthew. When Matthew first showed up in my life, I didn't need him. I wanted someone to share my life with, but I didn't need Matthew. Now, if I told you today that I don't need Matthew of all of these years together, I'd be lying because my whole life is built together with Matthew. Our business and working together and our garden and everything about our life, yeah. right? So set your life up now so you're not expecting some lover to show up and make everything fix everything for you, right? If your, your partner will make your life better, but they won't be fixing your life. Exactly. <laughs> so one of the other things about love at first sight, right? And why people talk about it is we create meaning looking backwards over events, right? That's what we do. That's how human beings sort of create an understanding of who they are. We look backwards over things that happen and we say, oh, these things happen, it must mean this, right? And for example, I could look back at that day sitting at that table and there was that light above Orna and I could say, see, that was it. That was love at first sight, right? But it wasn't. I had to get to know her, right? There were still things I needed to, to discover. I just knew I wanted to talk to her. I knew I wanted to find out more about her, right? So 
be careful of making meaning by looking backwards and saying, no, see, it proves it's true, right? Love at first sight happened. Well, you'd seen me a lot of times before that, Yeah, too. exactly. And I didn't <laughs> feel the light, right? I'd actually seen her for a year at that meeting once a month, and I didn't, there was no light bulb. There was no anything. It was that particular day things had shifted. Um, so, I mean, we don't want to you know, discount your opportunity for experiencing love at first sight. However, we also don't want you to get obsessed that you need to know right away. You need to recognize right away. And if you don't, that it's not your person. If you go on a date and you're like, yeah, it seems like a nice person, but I, I don't know, right? Does go it, out again. Go out again doesn't mean it can't be your person, right? Just because there aren't, you know, bells and whistles and fireworks going off on that first date, that first meet, that first experience with somebody doesn't mean that it won't develop into something that's really amazing. Right. We had a whole breakfast together where we talked about all kinds of things. We certainly it wasn't a romantic breakfast. It was a get to know you business wise breakfast. Right. Yep. Business owner to business owner. Business owner to business owner. Yeah. Now, we just we talked about a lot of things other than business and discovered we had a lot of similar interests and and there was a lot of other stuff going on there. But we didn't go into the meeting thinking, oh, I can't wait to you know see if this is my person. Right. When we have this this unrealis unrealistic hope and expectation and we put it on people we meet very briefly online or or, you know, we get set up by somebody, it's too much pressure. Right. So let go of this need, this desire for lightning bolts and fireworks instead. Just get curious and get curious getting to know people. Going out with somebody for the first time, meeting somebody the first time should be about an hour. Have somewhere to go afterwards. Be busy. Have your life be full. Feel like you have a full life. If there's something that's not working in your life, work to fix it as a single person. Don't expect that somebody's going to show up and suddenly fix whatever isn't working, right? Nobody wants to feel like, you know, somebody that you're on, going on dates with feels like, oh my gosh, you're going to fix everything in my life. That's, that's a little weird. However, looking backwards, you might find, right, once you're with somebody over time, you might go, oh my gosh, everything in my life just worked better after I, I started dating this person. Yeah. I know I could say that. I didn't think about it in the moment. I mean, I'll tell you, look, at that, me that meeting where Matthew says there was like a light above me, I mean, I knew I was sitting at his table. I knew who he was before, but he called me after that meeting. You know, hello, this is Matthew Walters. I would like to do some one-on-one -on -one networking with you so I could better refer business to you, right? Because the whole networking group was about sending, referring business to other, other members of the group. And I knew who he was when he called. And I said, oh gosh, Matthew, um, I don't know my schedule right now. I'm in the middle of something. Can I take down your number and I'll give you a call back? So I did. I wrote down his meeting number. And then a week went by. And then he called again. I didn't call him back. So all of you ladies, particularly I'm talking to the ladies, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I got to get back to this person right away. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. No. Because you know what? A guy that's interested in you, he's going to reach out again. This guy wasn't even interested romantically. He just wanted to talk with me. When I hadn't called him back for a week, he called again. Hi, Orna, this is Matthew Walters. And I'm like, oh gosh, Matthew, oh, I'm so sorry. I know I owe you a phone call. Let's get together and let's do, you know, let's do some one-on-one -on -one networking. And we set up a breakfast. That's it. That's how it happened. Yeah. And so it wasn't like because I didn't call Matthew back, he was like, huh, how, I can't believe her. She didn't call me back, you know, whatever. Like we, I was busy, I had a busy life. And so what I love about sharing our connection story is, it was about six weeks ish, give or take, from that networking meeting when Matthew called me all the way to when we had our first official date. Okay, that's might, might even been eight weeks, somewhere between six to eight weeks. Yeah, something like that. Somewhere in there. So we actually had time to get to know each other. Yeah, and so I like to call that period our courtship because the courtship happened even before the actual um, date. And what I loved about that is we got to know things about each other. Matthew invited me to one of those networking meetings that he was speaking at, which was a meeting I'd never been to before. And he had emailed me and a bunch of other people. He kind of threw me into a, you know, a group email saying, hey, I'm going to be speaking if somebody wants to, you know, hear me, blah, blah, blah. And so I emailed him back and I was like, oh, I haven't been to that, that particular meeting before. And 
And I was just curious to know more about this particular guy, right? And I, that's it. It wasn't like this lightning bolt, oh my gosh. I will tell you, after, after that first sitting down and talking, I definitely was interested in a different way. And I think Matthew could probably say the same thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So ultimately, <laughs> I think what we wanna say to you guys today is stop expecting love to happen just by magic, right? Poof, it happens and you're in love. But you don't have to let go of the fact that it can be magical and it will be magical. There's a lot of magic in us coming together, right? But it wasn't fireworks and it wasn't like, oh my God, this is definitely my person, right? It, it wasn't any of that. <laughs> but there was a lot of magic in it and a lot of joy and a lot of love and- And a lot of ease. And a lot of ease. And we know that that can be available to you as well. So. We want to say, like we said on Thursday, we're so grateful for all of you being part of our community. Um, for those of you in the U.S., have a great Thanksgiving this week. For those of you outside the U.S., maybe find some time to be grateful as well and share, you know, in the gratitude with all of us. Yep, we're so grateful, as Matthew said, just for every single one of you as part of our community. Um, we wouldn't be here without you, as a matter of fact. We're here for you. We're here to be of service to you. And so we're grateful for you, not just this Thanksgiving season, this holiday season, we're grateful for you every single day of the week. And so enjoy the rest of your week. We are taking the week off, no more Facebook Lives this week, um, but we'll be all um, refueled and refreshed. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you next Monday for Myth Busting Monday. And we just wanna say, we're just blessed to be of service to you. Um, you know, I just feel like Matthew and I both it, it took us a long time, right? We didn't get together till after 40. And we want you to know that it doesn't matter what age you are. It's never too late for you to find the love of your life. That's right. Have, Have a great, great night. Night. <laughs> <laughs> Bye for now.